So this week we talk about keep the main thing the main thing, which is easy, I think, if you're a guy. If you're a woman, it's harder because you think about a lot of things all the time. And take, for instance, cleaning out your closet. You can come in here with a box for Goodwill at nine in the morning and you start pulling out the clothes for the Goodwill box. And all of a sudden you see something, you think, I wonder if this fits. You try it on, you go get the shoes to make sure that they look right. And all of a sudden it's like a little fashion show you got going on in there. You go to put the shoes back and notice as you're putting them back, there's some things wrong with your sock drawer. You pull it open and find a lot of things that aren't socks. By the way, find cool stuff while you're cleaning up, bonus. But then you think, wow, if I just had some of those little dividers that go in the sock drawer, this could be awesome. So you get your keys, you grab your coat, you go to Target to get some little sock drawer dividers. But while you're there, you notice that they have waffle irons on sale. And who doesn't need waffles? So you grab a waffle iron, you bring it home, look at your kitchen. There's no room for it in the kitchen electronics shelf. So you're like, wow, I really have to fix this. You clean that up. All of a sudden, the kids are running at 6 p.m. Mom, what's for dinner? You order a pizza, you get the kids clean, you put them in bed, you wander back upstairs to find your closet open with the light on and the sock drawer still open. I tell you, it's easy to lose focus. Isn't that, Anita, hilarious? Isn't that the funniest thing? You know, womanhood is a gift, a gift from the Lord. And when we think back about that the Bible tells us that God formed us in our mother's womb. And then Jeremiah tells us that he has a plan for us. That's overwhelming to me, to think that God who created the universe has a plan for me and my life. And he created me uniquely for the plan that he has for me. And it's overwhelming to think about that. But oftentimes we believe the lie that the world has given us. And one of those lies is that we can and should have it all. We're going to talk today about womanhood, and we're going to let this bag represent womanhood and the gift that God gave us. And we're going to let these bricks represent the burdens that we often pick up. So we believe the lie that we can and should have it all, and that's kind of perpetuated by Hollywood. It's pushed on us by Hollywood to think that we can have a perfect house and the perfect yard and the perfect body because we're going to hit the gym four times a week. We think we can have the perfect children and the perfect husband. We volunteer for everything, not really taking into consideration how that affects our family. And all the while, we think we can come home and be a beast in the bedroom at night. It's crazy to think about all the pressures that we put on ourselves and that come from the outside. So let's talk about what should our priorities be. Well, first is the Lord, the Lord Jesus. Now we learned from Eleanor about how to study our Bible and about the importance of prayer. And that is true. That should be um, something that we do, but that can't just be a box that we check off. The Lord Jesus needs to permeate everything that we do. He needs to be the guiding force in in all of our life, in all areas of our life. So our first priority is Jesus. And our, under that is our marriage, our husbands. You know, marriages do not just happen. They take a lot of work. Have you ever heard it said that the nearest place to heaven on earth is a godly home and marriage, a house that's filled with joy? That takes work. It doesn't just happen. And then the third thing down is our children. Children do not just raise themselves. We have to be very intentional and on purpose when dealing with our children. So we have the Lord, and we have our husbands, and we have our children, and then we have our home. God called us to be the CEO of our home. Now, sometimes we think of that as like cleaning toilets and being barefoot and kind of what the world says, the negative side of that. And while I've cleaned a lot of toilets in my life, it's about running a home where joy abounds. And that takes work. And it's hard to be the CEO of something if we're never there for it. And then after that come all the rest of our priorities, 
our job in church, the other things that we volunteered for. So let's think about Let's think about those priorities as we deal with the burdens that we pick up. The church that I grew up in, there was a woman who was there, and we kind of thought she was super Christian. She had three children, and she was there all the time. She was uh, volunteering every Sunday, every Wednesday. She taught Bible studies. It didn't matter what it was. She was there. Almost any evening that you went over, she was there with her children, and they weren't really serving together. They were, her kids were sitting in the hall eating fast food stuff while she did her thing. And it's so sad to me because now we fast forwarded and none of her children are involved in church. Her marriage appears to be shallow. I I don't know that, but it appears to be. And I think to myself, she was so busy doing good things that she neglected the best thing. I don't want to do that. I don't want to neglect the best thing. I want the best that God has to offer for me. So we've talked about our priorities. Now let's talk about some of the things we pick up. Okay, so we already said we, we think we can and we should have it all. See if any of these things sound familiar. We sign our kids up for everything coming and going because we think maybe it'll make them well-rounded. What about we say yes to everything without really considering the impact that it's going to have on our families? Because when we say yes to everything else, oftentimes what we're saying is no to the people that we love the most. Oh, this is a big one for women. We compare ourselves to everybody else. And social media has just made this worse. They even have a name for it, Facebook Envy. Because who posts the bad stuff on Facebook? And so everybody looks around and they think everybody else has got a better life and a better home than they do. And they begin to be envious of other people. And all these things we just keep piling in without even really thinking about it. Oftentimes we find our self-worth in the positions that we hold, in our work, in our, and we don't find our self-worth where we're supposed to, which is in the Lord. And so that's a burden that we carry around. Many people feel very inadequate as a wife and a mother. And so this is a burden that they carry around. Some people don't have strong boundaries with families. Now listen, I want to clarify that I'm not talking about taking care of an ill or aging parent. But there are many people that either the parent keeps controlling the child, the adult child, or the adult child keeps running back to the parent. And we need some strong boundaries there. That can can create so much stress in the home. And so we just keep piling these things into this beautiful gift that God's given us. And almost everything that women pick up is just motivated by guilt. We all know that. And we grab this and we're carrying it around and little by little we've added these burdens and lies. And before you know it, this beautiful gift that God gave us starts looking like this. Because we just drag it around. We just drag around womanhood and the plan that God has for us. And we just drag it through the mud, don't we? It is not the plan that God has for us. It's like we're so discontent and we don't know what to do. We feel so overwhelmed and we kind of just shut down. Let's get our Bibles And let's turn to John 10, 10, and let's see uh, what God says about the plan that he has for us. Okay, so John 10, 10 says, the thief comes only to steal and kill. You notice it says only. That is his only job. And then this is Jesus speaking, and what does he say? I come that they might have life and have it abundantly. That word abundantly, it means extraordinary, superior. And I think to myself, that's what I want. I want a life that's extraordinary, superior. And and Jesus said that's the life that he came to give us, is one that's extraordinary. So what are some things that make us overwhelmed? Well, sometimes they're things that we can't control unforeseen sicknesses or circumstances, 
job losses. Back just before Thanksgiving, I found myself uh, in ICU very unexpectedly. And I remember uh, laying there, having those great conversations you have with the Lord, saying, um, I don't really have time for this. Um, I have lots to do and there's Christmas coming, well, Thanksgiving and Christmas and shopping. And they're telling me, not only are you in the hospital, but this is going to be a really long recovery and you're going to have to have lots of rest. And I, we do. We, we have so much to do. We've taken on so much. I was very overwhelmed in that moment. And to begin to just kind of say, what can I let go of? And to watch my family and friends and the body of Christ just rally around and take care of my family and take care of me was a sweet time. But sometimes we are overwhelmed just because of things that come in from the outside. And sometimes we're overwhelmed because we have picked up stuff that we were never, ever intended to carry. God never had it for us. Six years ago, my husband and I stepped out of a nice, cushy corporate job into the ministry. And I realized then when expectation meets reality, oftentimes what we get in the middle is frustration, which is where a lot of our uh, overwhelmed feeling comes from. So here was my expectation. We left this job, we took all of our savings, we kind of put it on the table, and we said this will kind of subsidize until the churches start calling. Our very well-known pastor uh, sent out letters and emails to lots of churches with our phone number on it, and my expectation was that the phone would start ringing and we would have lots of churches to speak in and there would be lots of love offerings. That was the expectation, and we got zero phone calls. I mean, I was waiting right by that phone. It, it was kind of nuts. The phone would ring and I would say, don't answer it. It might be a church. Not one. So, okay, we have expectation and it was meeting reality and I was completely frustrated. What God was doing was he opened the door in schools. Who gets to speak in schools? My husband does. Hundreds of young people were getting saved. I couldn't even rejoice. I couldn't even enjoy it because there was no money. I was selling everything that we had. I sold uh, wedding china. I sold any kind of valuable. We couldn't afford to hire anybody, so I became everything. I was already homeschooling our children, and now I'm the secretary. I'm the banker. I was even the lawyer. I would go online and figure out anything that we needed legally done. I would figure out how to do that. Oh, my bag was full. I was so stressed out, and I found myself on the floor one day thinking, I can't do this. I don't even like this. I don't like the ministry. Whoever thought I could do this? I want to hear it to go back to the corporate job where it's safe. And in that moment, literally on my floor in the bedroom saying, I cannot do this, Lord. It is too much. He began to speak to me, you know, not in that audible voice, the one that's louder than that, that's inside of you. And you know what he said? You picked up stuff I never gave you. And it was like a light bulb went on. It was true. I had just been throwing stuff in. Oh, I'll do it. Oh, I'll do it. Oh, I'll do it. Oh, I'll do it. Anything that needed to be done, I grabbed and took hold of. And it was never intended for me. So when we find ourselves overwhelmed, it typically is, is one of those things that we have either picked up what we weren't intended to carry or an unforeseen circumstance comes along. But when we are so overwhelmed, there are two, you have two options. Let's, let's look, first of all, at uh, Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. You guys, you guys flip to that. And let's see what, what God's Word says about our burdens. Because listen, God calls us to things that are hard, that are difficult. He never promised an easy road. Ask anybody that's dealing with a major sickness or a job loss or things that they couldn't see. God called us to hard things. So let's see what the Bible says. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. You notice that it says we will be weary at times, right? And I will give you rest. That overwhelms me again to think. God who made everything cares about me. And you know what he says? and I will give you rest. 
That's comforting to me. And then he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my load is light. So it never says that we won't have a load. He says that his load is light. So in those moments when we are overwhelmed, one of two things is true. Either we have picked up what we were never intended to carry, or we are not letting him help us. We're not running to him when we're feeling overwhelmed and taking his yoke upon us. And a yoke lets us know there's going to be work, but it says it's light. So it's one of those two things when that happens. And we need to learn to start kind of looking through our bag to see what have I picked up that I was not supposed to carry, that I just kind of said yes to. Remember that that the Lord Jesus wants an abundant life for us. We learned that in the beginning. That's what he wants for us. And so let's think about um, before we make a commitment, What are our top priorities? Okay, we already said that, right? Here's where the rubber meets the road a little bit. All of us in this room would say, yes, I agree. My top priorities, Jesus, my husband, my children, my home, the other things. We would say that. But when we take a look at our lives and we see what do we spend our time and our effort and our resources, our energy on, does that reflect that our priorities really are what we say they are? Do our actions line up with our words? And oftentimes, oftentimes they don't for a long period. Sometimes oh, we all just get busy and we have to step back and relook at things and reevaluate when we start feeling overwhelmed like that. So we're saying, does this please the Lord? Remember, if it is contrary to God's word, it is never right. It is never okay. So before you pick up anything in your life, you say, is this pleasing to the Lord? And the next thing you need to say is, how does this impact my husband? How does this impact my children? Oftentimes as moms, we get so busy doing things in the name of our children, volunteering for different things. We get so busy doing that, we're not actually with them, right? And we need to be with them. And then just pray. Pray over everything. Sometimes everything kind of looks right. It looks like you should do it. And God just, oh, he just doesn't let you. In your spirit, you know it's not right. Uh, Oh, goodness, probably seven years ago, we were involved in a homeschool co-op. And it was awesome. My children loved it. I loved it. It took a lot of the responsibility off me. We could kind of share that. It was a good situation for our family. And we were getting kind of toward the end of the year and needed to make a commitment for the next year. And every time I went to my quiet time, the Lord said, no, no. And I didn't understand that. It was a perfect fit. So I went to my husband and said, I don't know what to do. So we began to pray together. And he said, if you can't get a peace, you need to say no. And so I did very reluctantly. Went through the summer planning to do this on my own. We got into September, and my mother was diagnosed with colon cancer. And it was a horrible surgery and a horrible recovery time for her. And I was able to be there for her and for my dad and to help them. And I remember thinking, what a gift. God gave me a gift because I would have been so stressed out about worrying about my other commitments I couldn't see it at the time, though, but I'm so glad that I listened to that that little voice that just said, no, now is not the time for that. So pray over all of your commitments. And then when you get ready to make a commitment, you know, so many times we kind of just don't have a plan. So somebody asks you to do something, you just write off the cuff, you just go for it. Have some things in your mind to say, let me check my calendar and I'll get back with you on that. Or... Hey, give me a few days to pray about that and check with my husband so that we have some time. It's always easier to go back and say, "Uh, I thought about it and I can do that than it is to back back out of something that you said yes to. So have some really practical things in your mind. And listen, ladies, don't feel bad about on the spot saying, 
I am so sorry, but I can't do that. When you know, remember we talked about one of those bricks was guilt. We say yes to a lot of things just simply out of guilt. And we need to learn to back off of that and to think about what are our top priorities before we move forward. You know, the enemy would love for us to fall to immorality. He would. Uh, And sometimes we're really kind of on guard against that. But he will start with overwhelmed and irritable. He will. He'll start with that. Because we become very ineffective when we get overwhelmed. When we're overwhelmed, we are ill, aren't we? Just in our homes, we're just not a joy to be around because we're just... I think about that Proverbs that says to live with an irritable woman is like a constant dripping. Do you all know what that is? Water torture. (laughs) Seriously. That is what that is. Biblical water torture. I don't want to be um, part of that. I don't want that to be said about me. I want my home to be one that is welcoming and that my family looks forward to being in. And a lot of that has to do with me not being so overwhelmed. We set the tone for our home. We really do. It's peaceful or it's chaotic a lot of times based on us and our attitudes and how we kind of control things. And we have to learn to run to Jesus where he said, come to me. So when we have that moment overwhelmed and we just run to Jesus, And he either shows us that we pick stuff up like he did me that day or it's a situation that you could not have foreseen and you didn't pick anything up. But he still wants to give you that peace in the middle of that. We need to learn to just put this down and put lay our burdens down at the feet of the Lord. We need to learn to run to him and not be irritable and stressed out. We set the tone in our homes An amazing woman knows how to set biblical priorities. It wasn't long after the birth of our first child that we began to notice that she was not behaving like other children her age. She wasn't doing the typical things. We took her to see many doctors and specialists trying to get answers. This, however, was not how I had expected my life as a mom to be. Playgroups were hard and doctor's appointments were even harder. This was, however, exactly the life the Lord had planned for me. He chose me to be her mom. I remember feeling extremely overwhelmed one day after a therapist showed me all the things I should do with her every day. And then I remembered that the Lord was in control of her potential. I was just to do the best I could and leave the rest to Him. So when Maggie was three and a half years old, we were blessed with Ella Kate, a beautiful baby girl that we adopted. Shortly after Ella Kate's birth, Maggie was diagnosed with mitochondrial disease. The doctor we were seeing at the time told us that she would not live to be 10 years old. We were devastated. I now needed to learn how to balance possibly losing my oldest child with caring for my newborn baby and still focusing on my husband. Thankfully, I knew the importance of putting my marriage as a priority. I also knew the stress that marriages can be under with raising a child with special needs, and I didn't want that to happen to us. My husband and I are best friends, and we could relate to what we were going through because we were living in it together. We didn't always understand each other's feelings, but we did try to always listen and respect one another. I'm very thankful that we grew closer through these difficult times. We did try to not put our girls' needs ahead of each other's. I try to always analyze my life and rearrange things that are not focused on what is important to us. Our main goal is to glorify God in all things. One way we try to do this in our life is make decisions based on, is this good thing good for our family? When my priorities aren't in order, my family suffers. So I do try to also remember how important it is to major in the majors and minor in the minors. The majors for me are to be in a growing relationship with the Lord and to be a godly wife and mom. It wasn't long after that we were again blessed with a baby boy from Ethiopia. We now have three amazing children. 
I appreciate that the Lord is teaching me how to keep my focus on the main things and not let my priorities get out of order. I'm also excited to share with you that our sweet Maggie celebrated her 11th birthday and is doing amazingly well.